Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and it's previews time. Let's check all this good stuff out here, my peeps. We got the previews for December. Uh, this is the October issue, the previews for December. Uh, let's get started before the new year, baby. So we're going to talk about all this good stuff here, starting with the DC stuff. And guys, don't forget to check out my sponsor, Beautiful Halo. They got a whole bunch of good stuff. Check this out. I'm going to make an offer for you guys. You show me the receipt that you made a purchase on Beautiful Halo. I'll give you access to the Patreon video that I put out. All right. I put out a Patreon video every month. I'll give you uh, special access to that video. It's going to be a... Um, what is it? Uh, a look at Batman vs. Superman, the uh, the movie. So, boom. Let's go and check this out. My commentary on it. Anyway, guys, yeah, beautiful Halo with all their, their good stuff. Their, uh, their beautiful shirts and sweaters. And get ready for your, for your winter collection. All right. So, previews. Starting with the DC books. Open this up and boom. Year of the Villain, Hell Arisen. So, this is kind of cool. James Cheney IV is on it. That pretty much makes it a, a must-have, right? Um, this is going to be based off of the Year of the Villains stuff, but at the same time, all of the, uh, all that crazy stuff that happens with, um, Batman vs. Superman is apparently going to bleed over into this also. So, Year of the Villain, Hell Arisen, uh, it's going to be, what, four part? Yeah, four parts right down here, 32 pages each, so a little oversized. I'm looking forward to it, I'll check it out. Here's where we start voting. For all the, you know, which which villain is the best one and whatnot. Um, Harley Quinn, Year of the Villain. The Ocean Master, Year of the Villain. <clears throat> We've got The Low, Low Woods. This is one of the uh, Hell House stuff by Joe Hill. This stuff is actually looking cool, and there's a lot by Joe Hill. I'm going to have to check out Lock and Key. That's the big thing that he's famous for. I'm gonna, like, literally going to have to check all that stuff out because, wow, he's got a lot of horror stuff coming out. So, Dark Knight Returns, I think this is going to be, what, the fourth volume now? Whatever this is. Um, it's going to be a one-shot, The Golden Child. So, this is cool. The uh, the young bat people are growing up. So, all right, cool. We'll check it out. I, I got to be honest, I've only read the original Dark Knight Returns. I didn't read the next two. So, oops. <laughs> uh, Suicide Squad is coming back. Tom Taylor is writing it. They're promising that the people you see on the cover, not all of them are going to survive. Yeah, it's pretty much what the Suicide Squad was always supposed to be. Uh, what is this, Donna Troy here? I think this is supposed to be Donna Troy, the Deathbringer. Uh, ba -ba 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 bang. Uh, Batman Who Laughs, Batman vs. Superman. Yep, all the infected stuff. Anyway, um, eh, I don't feel like reading the whole thing. Okay, so the infected, the commissioner, he's going to be out. New Year's Evil is just basically going to be a one-shot, 80-page long, a whole bunch of New Year's stuff. I don't know. If, if you're interested, go ahead and check it out. I'm probably going to check it out just for the sake of conversation. Um, don't mind my one of my drumsticks over here. <laughs> um, the Dark Multiverse stuff, they're going to do retellings, you know, Dark Multiverse versions of the Judas Contract, apparently where Terror wins. Um, going to be redoing the Christ. Oh, this is the, the facsimile edition of, um, Crisis on Infinite Earths, uh, issue number eight. Cool. Cool. They, they just did facsimile covers for two of the issues already. So there's going to be a third one. Cool. Cool. Um, the Supergirl, World's Finest, Flash Giant, Aquaman Giant, DC, yeah, the 100 page Giants. So I believe that these are the, uh, the Walmart ones. And they're going to come to regular print in uh, the comic book stores, too. So, awesome. Awesome. Uh, this this looks interesting. Daniel Warren Johnson. This is the guy who did Murder Falcon. Go and check out those reviews. If you did not read those comic books, at the very least, check out the reviews and see how much I loved Murder Falcon. That was just un, unexpectedly amazing. Uh, and now he's going to have a take on a one-shot with uh, Wonder Woman. Uh, I don't see anything that says black label on this, but maybe I just missed it. Uh, kind of hoping it is. Anyway, so we got a bunch of the kids' novels. This is what used to be, what was going to be called Ink and Zoom. So, yeah, the Batman Once Upon a Crime, Shadow of the Batgirl. We got Zaytana and the House of Secrets. Um, okay, here we go with uh, Action Comics number 1018. That is an amazing variant. Gabriel Del Otto, that cardstock variant. My God, man. But like if 
I, I, I got I just got to point it out, man. Brian Michael Bendis is already having a hard time getting people to enjoy his stuff, and I don't care what the uh, the pop art freaking uh, places talk about. You know, the 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 places that get all the the early reviews for the DC comics and whatnot, and they don't want to risk not getting those early preview copies and and the early editions. You know what I'm saying? I they don't send me that stuff. So I've got to be honest with you. I can't do an audience of one. I got to do an audience of you guys. And my straight answer on this is if you're going to be doing action comics and we're, tr we're struggling to like the Brian Michael Bendis Superman world, you go and put freaking John Romita Jr. on this. You put John Romita Jr. on this like the fakest artist out there. If you like John Romita Jr., that's cool, man. But you are in the minority because like the dude... We know that he can draw better than this, but this is the stuff that he puts out because he's like, no, I'm going to make money off my name. I don't have to draw good anymore. I can just draw fast and, and get the stuff over with and let people like Claus Jansen fix my artwork afterwards because who cares? Yeah, like that's just painful when you know you're not doing your best. Um, Aquaman number 55. We're st <laughs> Look, I love me some Kelly Sue DeConnick. I've got some compunctions against seeing freaking the 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 mecha manta thing maybe she's gonna make this an amazing story but i'm i'm really wow <laughs> like i'm i'm prejudging okay i'm being honest i'm prejudging hopefully she completely humiliates me and makes this like one of the best aquaman stories ever in the meantime batgirl this is looking cool because now apparently um uh if i might have to start reading this again because Batgirl just recently did this thing where she had to beat the um, killer moth and he had some extra, seriously extra powers and she barely beat him. And now it looks like they're actually redoing that story a little bit with Oracle because she's always a step ahead of her. So she's going to have to, you know, Batgirl's going to have to learn from what she learned f uh, with, um, what's his name, um, killer moth. Okay, we're finally ending the Tom King run and... The king is dead. Long live the new king. That's um, uh, James Tinian the fourth. James Kingian the fourth. Let's do it, baby. Um, Batman. And no disrespect against Tom King. <laughs> I'm just saying that he's. He, this is his final book. He's gonna go off and do like they keep on doing these silly things. Reaches shocking end with an extra size issue. The amazing, critically acclaimed. Like they say stuff like this. Meanwhile, us regular people reading the comic book are like, dude, what the hell? <laughs> um. Batman Beyond, Curse of the White Knight, uh, some crazy stuff going on here, man, crazy stuff. The GTO struggles to forgive Batman for his behavior uh, on the tales of tragedy. Wow. So, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. The Batman's Grave, Warren Ellis, I, I don't see how that's not going to be good. Batman almost beaten to death. Brian Hill, writing an amazing Batman. Dexter Soy Boy Soy, do it like that's what he calls himself. Um, <laughs> doing some amazing work himself, like freaking beautiful. Batman Superman 5, this is going to finish everything here. Later, we're going to see how this, uh, yeah, well, it leads directly into he uh, Hell Arisen. You're the villain, Hell Arisen. I, I pointed that out in the beginning here. So, this should come out the same month that this comes out, the Year of the Villain, Hell Arisen. So, they literally lead into each other. Now, think about what that means. That means that the the Batman Superman stuff, which is the Batman who laughs, the dark metal stuff, does actually lead directly in. Well, eventually through this leads directly into what the Year of the Villain stuff was doing. So to see two big storylines come together, I'm really hoping it's going to be as epic as they seem to suggest. Uh, Joelle Jones still knocking out Catwoman. Cool. She's back. She's back. We've got Deathstroke number 50. This is going to be the final issue. Deathstroke versus Deathstroke. I don't know what's going to happen to Christopher Priest from this point on. I guess he's just doing Vampirella. Uh, Detective Comics, 1017. You're looking at what I'm looking at, too. Tom Taylor, the dude's amazing. But, whoa, what's going on? What's going on? What what happened to my boy? What happened to my boy, Peter Tomasi? How come he's not? Oh, he's just a guest writer. He's just a guest writer. And issue number 1018, Peter Tomasi is back. So I'm cool. You, you go ahead and give my boy... My boy is going to give my boy a break with this story. All right, we good. We're good. <laughs> We're good. I was a little scared. Doomsday Clock, issue number 12. I want to remind you, this is the December release. 
they are going to struggle in every way, shape, and form to make sure this comes out in December. Because you know what happens if it doesn't come out in December, right? That means it comes out in January. It comes out in 2020. And then there's no denying that it, it took an extra year to do it. Make no mistake, it coming out in December is no different than it coming out in in um, uh, June, or excuse me, in July. December and July, uh, ah, January, all the J months. Um, yeah, so December, January, it's the same damn thing. But with that year tick, <laughs> they're good. Oh man, if this gets delayed into like the first week of January even, they're never going to live this down. Because now you got like the dated proof when this actually reaches. They're going to start doing the, no, 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 publication date, publication date. Anyway, I'm looking forward to this. It's an amazing story, man. Um, the Flash 84, cool. Uh, Flash 85. The rogues are getting some superpowers, and uh, apparently Mirror Master is going to turn on the other rogues. I am really, really looking forward to that. And this right here, oh my god, Kari Andrews with this freaking variant cover. How you doing? How you doing? Flash forward, this is going to be a six-issue limited series. We already saw issue one is out. I got my, um, my review on this. Gotham City Monsters, Genlock 2. I'm not even reading Genlock 2. I'm not going to continue on Gotham City Monsters. It's just too much. Green Lantern, Black Stars. I don't know, man. I, I might be getting into this, but I even had to drop uh, Green Lantern. No, you know, the Green Lantern, knowing that the final issue comes out this week. But I couldn't read issue 11. Probably not going to read issue 12. It's just too much. Harley Quinn. We got uh, more Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. Hawkman number 19, they're really going into this. And Robert Venditti is going to be doing this by having Shayara uh, being the main Hawk character in this book. And apparently he's just going to be infected. Um, I hope that he's okay with this because it looks like it's being forced on him. We'll see, though. Uh, He-Man and the Masters of the Multiverse, issue number two. This looks, it just looks beautiful. So, like, wow, absolutely gorgeous. Inferior 5 and 6, this is, issue 1 was an amazing horror story. Go read that. Go look at my review at the very least. Joker, Killer Smile, this is Black Label. Jeff Lemire doing this right before he does his Black Label, The Question. Can't wait for that. Uh, Joker, Harley, Criminal Sanity. They're really pushing the uh, Harley thing, man. What's up with that? <laughs> um, Justice League, issue number 37. These issues just keep coming out week after week after week. It's like, slow down, my peeps. It's already uh, too overpacked. So here's the conclusion to the Justice League Do More, finally, with issue number 38. Looking forward to that finally ending. Justice League Dark, James Tinney the fourth. Dude's amazing. Justice League Odyssey, uh, sorry, I just don't care anymore. Uh, you can go and check out this uh, Lucio Perello uh, variant cover. It's it's beautiful, it's Starfire there, but... Eh. Uh, Legion of Superheroes, uh, probably not going to look. He's got the thing of Atlantis. You know, I, just, I just really don't care, Bendis. I really just don't care. This I want to care about, but they're uh, digging too deep into the Brian Michael Bendis stories. So Greg Rucka, who is amazing, is stuck doing leftover stories basically for uh brian michael bendis who's doing so issue six and seven coming out in december bendis is doing uh is going to be finishing up the um uh leviathan miniseries which bleeds directly into this and also his superman superman issue number 18 you're going to see that later superman decides to reveal his identity to the world so it's going to be a status quo changing thing um and Boom, all that stuff is going to bleed over into this 12-issue uh, Maxi series with Lois Lane. It is highly political if you can get over yourself and just enjoy the book uh, because they're telling a political story. It's Lois Lane, after all. Then, it's seriously, it's a great story. Uh, I, so far, I love it. I hope that these issues are just as good. Yasmin Putri doing a Lois Lane cover. That's beautiful. I might be able to get the, the variant cover for this one. Um, Martian Manhunter, almost over. Metal Man not even remotely interested nightwing 67 apparently he's going to we know that when uh tinian takes over for batman that uh nightwing actual nightwing is going to be in it so i'm presuming that that means that nightwing is going back to his typical status quo for now though rick grayson is going to actually join and become a talon himself he's going to uh, accept that version of his heritage 
which it's weird because he's not accepting the other heritage. Whatever, that's cool. So let's see how this story plays off. It's, it's Dan Jurgens. I mean, come on. We, we got to trust Dan Jurgens, right? Scott Liddell doing Red Hood Outlaw. Uh, number 41, the, the, the whole team is going to reunite Artemis and uh, Bizarro, but they're going to re reunite as enemies and try and kill Jason Todd. I, I think I've already fallen off of what Red Hood is doing, so I don't know. RWBY, Marguerite Bennett, Mirka Andolfo is doing uh, the art on it. Um, Megan Hetrick is also doing art. I don't know what that means, but with issue number three, uh, like, I, like I'm cool with the idea, that, and, and this is not an insult. They're, DC is trying to copy Marvel by doing the, uh, the manga world. I think that's a great idea, and hopefully it takes off for them. Hopefully this proves to be something very successful for them. <clears throat> but there, this is something that I think most of us are going to have to get because issue number three has a variant cover by Art Germ Stanley Lau. So I think that pretty much speaks for itself. Scooby Doo, where are you? We got uh, what is this? Am I missing a page? I don't think I am. Shazam number nine. That's cool because Shazam eight isn't out yet. So that means that we're going to get a bunch of issues coming out uh, quickly. Kari Andrews. This is one of the most beautiful Kari Andrews. Man, that's just gorgeous. Here we got um, Derek Chu doing a great variant cover for Supergirl number 30, uh, 37. Uh, Bengal doing this uh, main cover. I don't like Bang. We I think we know Bengal does better covers than this. I don't know what this is all about, but this the arm might be a little out of proportion. But I see Derek Chu trying to go the art germ route. Dude, you're almost there. That's gorgeous. I'm really looking forward to that. Speaking of great covers, Scan like this is the Superman number 18 where he's going to reveal his identity to the world um scan doing that beautiful cover like that the the proportions on this man i just gotta point out the proportions on that are so epic my god the coloring of this the direction of the cape the like the the dimensions like this is three-dimensional you know what I'm saying hand back here face here fist up here the whole lead into like, god that is just gorgeous still manages to avoid drawing the feet which god i hate feet Superman smashes the clan. I'm probably gonna have to read this because this is such an ancient story finally coming to comic books. Jimmy Olsen's uh, fuck you. Um <laughs> Teen Titans issue 37. We're gonna finally find out who the other is. Looking forward to that. The Terrifics 23, uh more Hillhead, uh Hillhead, more Hill House with basket full of heads. You can see where that Freudian slip came from. Now a seven-issue miniseries. He's got more story to tell. Uh, I, what is this? The Dollhouse family, Mike Curry. I talked about this in the previous, uh, this week in comics, the On the Horizon. And this looks good. This looks really good. So clearly this is going to be a monthly comic book. I'm looking forward to this, man. The Dollhouse. So, uh, DC is really trying to get into the scary stories, man. You got, uh, Sandman, House of Whispers, Dreaming. You got all the Hill House stuff. You got the, uh, the Dollhouse over here. Uh, what do you call it? Hellblazer is coming back. John Constantine Hellblazer by Cy Spurrier. Last God. Like, what is this? Wow, this stuff looks great. This stuff looks really good. Lucifer is out. Collapsers coming to an end. Just that being out was a freaking horror story. Sorry. Um, don't care about Doom Patrol. Sorry. Far Sector, I got to give it a shot. I got to give it, even though it's young animals, and I'm usually not a fan of that particular style you know, the silliness, but yeah, this uh, Far Sector, it's a new Green Lantern and not an Earth uh, 2812, I think it is. Uh, 12, tw wow, uh, 26, 28. I can't remember what Earth, if somebody please comments below, I'll give you a heart. Um, what do you call it? Dial H for Hero. I wound up falling off of that. Wonder Twins 10. This is Mark Russell at his best, in my opinion. I love this work. Um, Young Justice, we'll see. Uh, Batman Universe, yeah, 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 the Walmart stuff, all of the Walmart stuff here. Superman Up in the Sky, Titans, uh, Come Back to Me, Wonder Woman, the Burning Rage stuff. Uh, Dollar Comics, here we go. Birds of Prey, issue one, DC Dollar Comic. Um, Flash number 164, which one was 164? Coincide with Flash, greatest tricks of all time. Oh, so the trickster is going to be in this, I guess. Flash 164, dollar comic, whatever. Probably going to grab it because it's a lousy dollar. Uh, another dollar comic, Tales of the Teen Titans Annual Number 3, has Terra in it. Um, the, one of the greatest teams ever, Perez and Wolfman. 
uh, to coincide with Tales of the Dark. Oh, oh, okay, so so it is, yeah, I figured it's the Judas contract. Okay, bang, so to coincide with, okay, so they're coinciding with the Dark Multiverse stuff. Okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. So the Dollar Comics are going to coincide with the uh, Dark Multiverse stuff. That is a brilliant idea. Freaking excellent job, uh, DC. Freaking excellent job. Okay, so um, this stuff here, the Dollar Comics, Batman number 613. Okay. Um, Forever Evil, the trade paperback, uh, the Ronin. We've got a whole bunch of stuff here. The Legends, Legends of Wolf Wonder Woman Origins. We've got the stuff here. Uh, bang. Oh, which one is uh, Death of a Prince? Ah, oh, dude. My peeps. This is the one where Black Manta actually kills um, Arthur and Mira's son. Dude, this is a... Yo, my peeps, it's $40. But if uh, you have the ability to get this, if you have the, uh, the funds to get this, please get this. This is just one of the most amazing Aquaman stories ever. My God, man. Like, that... That's a cry fest right there. That was not even killed. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm moving on. So, we got the... Yeah. Cool. Um, we got the Arkham Asylum stuff coming out. The Black Mask one. And I thought that something like this just came out. Uh, but it's a trade paper. Oh, it's trade paperback of all the greatest hits of uh, Black Mask. And then we got one of Victor Saz. Uh, probably going to grab that. It's only 20 bucks. Probably going to grab that. I mean, it's it's Zaz, dude. It's Zaz. We got uh, Batman Beyond collection. We got the <laughs> the Neil Adams Batman stuff with Denny O'Neill. Batman Gotham Knights Transference, The Golden Age Batman Volume 6, uh, Books of Magic, Batwoman, uh, Birds of Prey, more Birds of Prey, uh, Black Canary, Harley Quinn, Huntress, and uh, Murder and Mystery. So a whole bunch of Birds of Prey stuff coming out. That's actually kind of cool. I might have to check all that stuff out. Especially the Huntress one. That looks really cool. Um, Monstrous, Damage, The Dreaming. Uh, more of The Flash. Greatest, yep, Greatest Trick of All. Uh, volume 11, so... All right, so there's all some recent stuff. The Flash Quest. Huh. It's Joshua Williams doing it. So if it's the greatest trick of all, I don't get it. So this is just the, the most recent stuff. Just like the Dollar comic over there. I don't know why they're doing that. Anyway, um, yeah, Green Arrow... Uh, like, why would you make it a dollar comic? It just came out recently. Anyway, um, okay, so this is all just recent stuff here. Uh, Harleen, all three of them. Oh, wow, all three of them are going to, I guess, be in the, um, a trade for 30 US. All right, cool, whatever. I'd rather have the individual magazine style issues, but all right, cool. Cool, I'm down, I'm down. High level, Huntress Origins, that's probably going to be a must-have. Crisis on Infinite Earth, uh, um, Infinite Crisis, excuse me, the Omnibus, yep, um, this was a great story, I love this story, so, trade paperback, grab it, Gods Amongst Us, Year 5, <laughs> the Justice League, Born, uh, Born Again, this was good, uh, this is like 90s, man, this was, wow, uh, Origins, Legend of Dark Knight, do, 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 do. Uh, Spirit of Truth. God, I hated this. My God, I hated that. Um, beautiful art. It was beautiful art. But man, I hated that. Uh, let the battle begin. That's going to have to be a spotlight in the story one of these days. All right. So you got these statues. Good. Always got to have a Harley, right? I love the bombshells. Loves me some Huntress. This is cool. They just did a... Um, um, the good guys one, the Bat Family, so I guess they gotta do the bad guys. I'm disappointed there's only three or four of them. I'm very disappointed at that. That's a shame. It should have been more than that. Anyway, you got all these guys here. It is cool. Some of these are really cool. That looks amazing. I don't know what the hell that is, but... Okay. Um, like, are you kidding me? And, uh, the hero attire. This is cool. Look at this. You'll see it in the, um, the big book. The big previews book, but that's actually a kiss. That's a set of lips. So it kind of looks, it's kind of reminiscent of the, um, um, oh, I can't remember what freaking song it's from or what album it's from, but the, uh, the Rolling Stones, you know, with the, the tongue and all that. 
Yes. So when I was a kid, I used to think that I used to think that was Kiss, and I was like, "Wait, it's a Rolling Stones. What's going on?" Anyway, so this is actually a set of lips with the bat symbol in it. It's kind of weird colors, but for the most part, I get it. It's it's still kind of cool. It's kind of cool. I'm digging on that. Okay, so let's move that aside. Quick reminder about my sponsor. It's the only sponsor I got, my peeps. Support me, support them. Uh, go and check out the um, uh, beautiful Halo stuff. Uh, check out all the beautiful licensed stuff that they've got with uh, inexpensive shipping. Again, you grab something from them and I will, uh, you, you send me that receipt, that digital receipt, you know, like a photocopy of the receipt somehow and a way that I can send you a link and I will give you the link to the video for the, um, the Patreon exclusive stuff. It will be, because basically it's anybody who's supporting me financially. And if you buy something from Beautiful Halo, you're supporting me financially also, which I genuinely appreciate that. As opposed to just all the free stuff that I put out. So yeah, bang. Um, anyway, let's get talking about the Marvel free preview stuff. So uh, these are actually previews for the incoming. And, you know, I enjoyed the... Um, the um, Marvel issue number 1000. I'm looking forward to Marvel issue number 1001. And then there's going to be a one shot for called The Incoming, which is basically going to be part three to that very lengthy story. And I'm realizing now that this guy, this is actually supposed to be the, um, uh, the, the Marvel Universe version of the question. Like, that's my interpretation of this. And I'm digging on that big time digging on that. So they actually give us a preview. They show that he can actually get superpowers. Not just that he can match the strength of somebody else. No, he actually gets superpowers also if somebody else is near to make him equal to that hero. And here he gets a radar sense because I guess Daredevil is uh, coming close to him. So that is awesome. That is amazingly awesome. He's trying to solve a murder, but the mask shows him things. And he doesn't just show him things that they want him to see. The mask sometimes shows him things that it wants other people to see. So this actually looks really cool, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to this incoming, man. One will unite them. This looks fun. And of course, they got like everybody working on it. I'm cool with it. It looks fun. Genuinely looks fun. Um, and all the, what do you call it? Jessica Jones up in the front. That's cool. You don't see that very often. They're really putting on to it. Here's the hidden gem variant cover. That's beautiful, man. Absolutely gorgeous. So, Annihilation Scourge. This bugs me because it's just a bunch of one-shots. So, Annihilation Scourge Nova, Silver Surfer, Beta Ray Bill, Fantastic Four, and they're going to have another one, Omega. And um, it's basically, it's going to be a threat, a cosmic threat that is not actually Annihilation, but it's supposed to be coming from the, um, uh, or somewhere around the, the negative zone also. And apparently in the first issue, Nova and his arch nemesis, Annihilus, have to actually team up. So is it going to be a war on three fronts, or is it going to be these two actually team up to try and stop the Scourge from coming? So maybe it involves Blastar. That would be cool. Um, they're going to have the boxes for it. The, the, you know, the short box. It's one box. It's both sides of it. Um, I don't think I'm going to need a box by then, which is fine. But, uh, like, it's Beta Ray Bill on a cover, so I might get it anyway. <laughs> so, anyway, also they're, they're promising a new status quo for Silver Surfer after the issues of uh, Silver Surfer Black. So, apparently, he had to make a serious sacrifice. So, I don't know how powerful he is, but, yeah, he's not going to be as powerful as he used to be. So, I'm okay with that for a little while, at least. You know, let's see how that turns out. See what people are going to do with that. We got Giant Size Defenders, issue number three, which is the, uh, I think this is the first appearance of Korvac. I could be wrong. I'm trying to remember, but, bang. You've got this, Marvel Tales. A bunch of stuff from uh, Annihilation from way back in the day. God, this is back when um, Jim Starlin was actually drawing. Uh, this is beautiful. And look, look at Wendell Vaughn back there, man. God, this is gorgeous. So here's all the true believers for Annihilation. We've got Omega, Man Called Nova, Fantastic Four. Just a, a man-wolf. We've actually got a man-wolf coming out. That could be fun, I'm hoping. we got Thor. This looks like one of the Walter Simonson uh, ones, Odin Power. Yeah, so I believe this is going to be Walter Simonson. This is the one where they show what the Odin Force actually is. 
Um, spoiler, it's all three of his brothers. Um, well, both, it's all three of the brothers, including Odin, excuse me. Uh, more of the uh, true believers. So mind you, this is all the dollar stuff. This is the first appearance of the super adaptoid, which is, yes, the, uh, the, um, uh, the, no, the, the awesome android, which is the, oh yeah, yeah, super adaptoid. Crap, what the heck is the, the, they, they stole that idea from DC Comics. I forget what his name is over there. Ah, uh, for crying out loud, I'm, I'm even seeing it on the cartoon, the animated movie. Damn it. Anyway, you know who I'm talking about. Somebody mention it below, I'll give you a heart. So anyway, yeah, you get all these different guys. Here. Super Scroll versus Thor. This is, I love the dollar comics. Uh, DC called them dollar comics. Here we, they're called um, um, True Believers. So this is cool. Just all the characters that are involved in Annihilation. So here we got Wrath of the Serpent God. Uh, Jim Zub doing this uh, four issue limited series. Two of those issues are coming out in December. I imagine the other two will therefore come out in uh, January. So all these, I can't remember her name. Um, actually, I think they say it over here. Dark Agnes, there we go, Dark Agnes. So she was in the final story that Robert E. Howard ever wrote. In fact, it came out post-mortem, came out after he'd already died. So Black Agnes, um, uh, I think that she's an ultra... Christian? I could be wrong. I think that she's an uber Christian, though. Anyway, um, so bang, her, Crom boy himself, uh, Conan, but these two should be the most interesting to get along, because Moon Knight, pagan god, right? And then you got Solomon Cain, the Puritan. God, this could be amazing, and I really hope, like, War Across, Across Time defy the Elder Gods. God, I really hope that Zub does a great job on this, so... Bang, one and two, and um, Valley of the Worm. Yeah, that's actually, this is the uh, True Believers, so we're going to have another True Believers here. Conan, Serpent War, Issue Zero, The Valley of the Worm, which is kind of a prequel to the Serpent War stuff. Uh, this is also based on the novel where, um, uh, what do you call it, Black Agnes first appears, if I'm remembering correctly. I believe that this is the one where, um, yeah. Anyway, um, this is Jamie, uh, James Allison. So this is what Zub is actually doing because he's read all these before. So awesome. Awesome. Um, X-Men stuff. This is the, the regular X-Men book that's coming out afterwards. So uh, November, we're getting the first issues of these things, uh, apparently. Uh, but issue three and four coming out in December. Uh, this is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. We've got the New Mutants. Uh, Ed Brisson is doing the New Mutants. Uh, just, wow. And, and he's switching. He's actually going back and forth between him and um, uh, Jonathan Hickman. I don't know how happy I am that there are different artists on here, but since there are different writers that could come in handy, this issue particularly, look at this, they got the stupid French twins back again. Come on, man. I'm so sick of these stupid kids. Anyway, there's the New Mutants, the new New Mutants on Earth, and the original New Mutants are actually going off into Shi'ar space. You got uh, Deathbird on here and everything. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this works. Rod Rice is on this. Come on, man. God, this is going to be amazing. Brian Hill doing Fallen Angels. I love Brian Hill's work. I don't think I'm going to have any complaints about this work. Um, just boom, Simon Kudransky doing the art. Uh, Benjamin Percy, I'm trying to remember stuff that he's done recently, uh, nothing comes to mind, but he's doing the X-Force books, and these guys are actually eliminating threats to mutant kind. God, like, considering what House of X and Powers of Ten are doing right now, that should be amazing. Excalibur was a book that I was never a huge fan of. I mean, obviously, that's where you get uh, you get the understanding that, you know, the these guys live in the Earth 616, and you start to really understand time jumping and stuff like that. In those books, I get it. Let me try and uh, readjust this a little tiny bit. Uh, I get that. There was, a, there was some very crucial, crucial stories in there. I'm not denying that. But that being said, uh, I, Excalibur just got way too silly for me sometimes. And, and I fell off the book multiple times. And now, to make matters worse, even though they got Marcus Toe on art, which is amazing, um, they're going to have Teeny Howard doing this. And I've just realized that I haven't, actually enjoyed a single book that Teeny Howard has done. Again, please just remember who I am, guys. I'm not insulting you or calling you names because you like somebody that I don't like. Um, you like somebody's work and I don't like their work. It's all just a matter of taste, but I'm going to try the first issue. If it doesn't grasp me, like, and even if it does get me, 
Um, it's only going to hook me enough to get the next issue. So I'll, if I do read another issue, every issue that I read of these will be on a case by case basis, um, based on how much I like the issue prior, because even it, like, I just hope that nothing major happens in here, because like I said, I'm simply not a fan of Teeny Howard's work. And, uh, I don't know, man, we'll see the hard truth of captain's cap of the captain's Britain. We'll see. We'll see what's up. The Marauders, which is actually basically going to be the uh, Hellfire Club. Uh, the, um, Sebastian Shaw is going to be looking for a new black bishop, and there's a character named Bishop on the cover. Hmm, I wonder how that's going to work. Oh, and he's black, and he's black. I'm just pointing that out. Watch, well, they're going to completely screw us over, and it's going to be actually Storm, which would really be amazing. So, looking forward to this. Looking forward to checking that out. Um, boom shakalaka. What is this? The Okay, so they're doing... Uh, new and old, kind of. Uh, newer and original. The facsimile edition of the first issue of The Eternals. This is probably going to be a must-have, my peeps, because it's not only about the movie coming out. The Eternals is kind of crucial storytelling, so you should really try and get all 12 issues of the original Eternals, uh, written and drawn by Jack Kirby. They're kind of hard to understand. You might have to read them more than once, but they're worth it. This is a major aspect. If you want to understand the cosmic Marvel Universe and better understand the Kree and the Inhumans, better understand what these guys that we don't see very often of, but their consequences, you know, are, are pretty radical. Um, besides the idea that freaking Jason Aaron just recently willy-nilly killed off truly immortal creatures. I don't know how he pulled that off, but anyway, yeah, this... Get this dollar comic if you enjoy it, and I think you will. Consider trying to get the entire trade paperback of all six issues because Eternals is really important. Really important story to understand the cosmic uh, nature of, like, the Celestials. First appearance of the Celestials in here and everything. So you, if, if you ever find yourself saying, I don't understand the Celestials and their place in the universe and, and all these different aspects of the Marvel Universe, it's because you have not read Jack Kirby's The Avengers. Get these issues. Do yourself a favor. Suddenly you'll be like... I get the Marvel Universe. How come everybody else doesn't? <laughs> so, The Eternals, Mark Grunewald uh, on this. Really looking forward to this. This looks like it'd be fun. Uh, this is going to be a one-shot. 2099, a 40-page one-shot. It's going to be by Nick Spencer. It's going to be the actual um, Miguel O'Hara. So, um, yep, Miguel O'Hara. So, um, this should be fun. This should generally be fun. Spider-Man 2099. Plus, there's a whole... 2099 universe thing coming out crossover and tie-ins issue 35 and 36 of spider-man bang <clears throat> um and plus there's gonna be a whole bunch of one shots of these uh when they do a bunch of one shots like that i'm usually not particularly impressed um the spider-man stuff i'm sure is gonna be good but the other stuff i'm sure ed brisson's gonna make an amazing ghost rider 2099 i'm sure chip zardoski is gonna blow me away with uh doom 2099 because wow um, Jody Hauser, I'm positive, is going to make this amazing Venom 2099. Uh, all of these are one-shots, by the way. And read this. Read the solicit if you get a chance. Welcome to the future, where the cure uh, for what ails you is at your fingertips with Alchemex, our industry-leading pharmaceutical department, and in parentheses, help. Over here, in parentheses, free me. Um, save me. Don't let them destroy me. Oh, my God. The solicit on this is unbelievably good so i can't wait to see the actual comic book my god man my god man and then uh 2099 omega it looks like doom is going to rule all they keep it's nick spencer so that's cool um uh, what do you call it? they keep doing the omegas to show it's the final issue that's it's cool uh, patrick gleason's going to be on uh doing the cover dude i'm down i'm so down Doctor, they're not calling it that but over here you can see they are this is dr strange surgeon supreme the new um, uh, status quo, they remind us that there's a price for him because he's going to be, um, compromised. He's going to be doing the Sorcerer Supreme stuff, but he's also going to be working as a surgeon again. He's going to be trying to fix over in a crossover. He's going to be the one who tries to save, um, what's her name's father, uh, Kamala Khan's father. So like, I love this idea. I love the crossover potential of this. This is amazing. This is amazing. Um, the trick is, I get the feeling that this is going to end because the price to pay is going to be that he gets used to having his hands back and being pain-free. 
Uh, and then the price is that he's going to have to give up his hands after he got them. And that's going to break him. Um, it's probably going to be really sad. And, and I hope that if they do do that, you know, like I'm speculating, that's what they're going to do. If they do do a, uh, do do, uh, um, what do you call it, a story like that, an ending like that, I just really hope they do it justice. As long as uh, Wade stays on it, I'm sure that they will. Revenge of the Cosmic Ghost Rider, um, Dennis Hopeless and Donny Cates. Donny Cates taking second string on this, which means that he he plotted out the entire story and Dennis Hopeless is going to be delivering. Dennis Hopeless at this point sometimes seems more like a ghost writer, writer, not rider, than anything else. Um, he's good. I really, like, don't get me wrong. I love what Dennis Hopeless Hallam does. I love what Dennis Hopeless does. Um, it's just he, he's been taking a lot of backup stories as of late. Uh, he's doing the Gamerverse stuff. We're going to get more into that in a hot minute. I, I, I'm hoping we're going to be really happy with that. But I feel like he should just take over the Gamerverse at this point. Um, him ghost writing for a ghost writer, cosmic ghost writer. I'm sure this could be fun, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. They're, they're doing a lot with cosmic ghost writer right now. I guess it's because the figure is going to be coming out soon. By the way, can't wait. Thor the Worthy. This is going to be a 40 page one shot. Uh, and it's going to be Walter Simonson coming back to do stuff. There's going to be other people on it too. Uh, I practically don't care. Except Sal Buscema is coming on to do some stuff too. Which is like, whoo! And there's going to be a variant cover by Walter Simonson himself. I just, guys, if you don't get this, I don't love you. Um, let's move on. Oh, look at that. Looks like some Eric Masterson showing up too. Sweet! Okay, Punisher, Soviet. This is going to be a, a Garth Ennis book. Max series, Punisher. Come on. Who's not getting that? Okay, Scream, The Curse of Carnage, Clay McLeod Chapman, this and Chris Mooneyham. I am looking forward to this stuff. This looks like it's going to be amazing. Got to figure out more about this character. Uh, Morbius, Vita Ayala. Uh, she hasn't done a lot of work in comics as I've seen, but the stuff that she has done in Marvel at least, I have loved her work. So really hoping that she does justice to a Morbius story. Looks like he's going to kill the Melter. F the Melter, so good. Um, Kelly Thompson doing Deadpool and going to have um, Elsa Bloodstorm in it. Elsa Bloodstorm, I think, is the best character that she has ever written for. So that's awesome. She's going to have Elsa in here. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what she does with Deadpool. Really, genuinely looking forward to it. So bang. Uh, Ghost Rider, Ed Brisson. Come on, this is going to be good. Plus, it looks like um, Mephisto is going to be involved in it, too. Sweet. Good to see what this um, the King of Hell story is going still. Christopher Cantwell doing the Doctor Doom story. Uh, Mephisto is going to be in it. Doctor Doom is apparently going to die and go to hell. And he's going to have to fight for his immortal soul against Mephisto. So this looks cool. They're doing more, um, excuse me, Peter David and Greg Land. They keep on doing the symbiote Spider-Man stories. This one's uh, the next five issues, uh, Alien Reality, where we're going to see how Green Goblin got his magical powers and all that stuff. I want to be offended. I Not offended. I want to be annoyed that they keep on doing like five shots, five shots, five shots, as opposed to a continuous series. But you know what? They're so good that I just don't care. <laughs> um, Spider-Ham, five-issue miniseries. Zeb Wells, Will Robson, Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Now. Uh, God, I hate you people. <laughs> this looks like a beautiful Inyuk Lee cover. Looking forward to this, I guess. Spider-Verse, Jed McKay. I mean, it's Jed McKay. He's doing Spider-Verse. He's usually pretty good. I'm just so tired of seeing this stuff. But they're going to bring back SPDR. I've got that figure. Let's see what um they can do now. Sana McGuire, I love her Ghost Spider stories so much. Um, but, man, she like I feel like she was sexually harassed at some point, And she's just really telling that story right now through the eyes of uh spider gwen because the jackal is such a damn creeper and you know that's just with issue number one and two that's already out now issue five like you see this cover my god man this is creep fest to its max my god that's freaky okay they're actually showing the cover here this is cool uh i in my absolute carnage miles morales issue number two story also done by saladin ahmed i um uh, excuse me, my review, not my story. It's their story. I, uh, I I talked about how they gave the inks 
for this cover. Well, this is the full cover right here. This is what the full cover actually looks like. So that's cool. Um, Mariko Tamaki, um, I, I'm just not a huge fan of some of the stuff that she does. But this looks like it might be more up her alley. It's more silly stuff. It looks like these two are switching bodies. And Venom in Spider-Man's body is going to become a um, uh, world of athletic competition reality show. I have no idea what this stuff is supposed to be about. But it's four issues and I'm probably going to have to check it out. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to check this out. And I hope it's really good. Um, I really hope that... Uh, Mariko finds her her actual you know good comic book voice that I can personally enjoy. Leia Williams, I've been I can't remember if I like or dislike her work. I think I'm kind of medium. I can't remember, but anyway, um, Amazing Spider-Man. The, the 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 solicits at least are amazing for this. The but she's apparently like she's she gets suckered into um, joining this story for the um, the directorial debut of. Um, uh, Beck over here, the, uh, the, the Mysterio. Jeez, I couldn't remember his name. Um, I remember his civilian name, not his superhero name. Anyway, yeah, so she's, she's gonna, it looks like she's actually gonna fill, uh, finish filming, you know, the, you know, the entire production, which, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> this version of Spider-Man, like, what the hell is going on? And Vulture shows up trying to collect an old debt, and since the Vulture is actually a murderer, like a straight murderer, this could be interesting, this could be fun, so... Yeah, I'm really hoping that Leia Williams knocked this out of the ballpark because I really want this comic book to, to succeed. I really want this to be an amazing story, man. J.J. Um, Abrams and uh, his son, Henry Abrams, doing this. The first issue blew me away. I know it didn't um, affect too many people, a bunch of people who didn't like it, but wow, I loved it. <coughs> Excuse me. Black Cat, issue number seven. Um, Jen McKay's been doing a great story with this, and that's a heck of a booty shot. That's a heck of a booty shot. Alas, poor Venom. My God, Donny Cates loves torturing his characters, and we love reading them. Um, Mark Bagley doing all of the art in the book. Beautiful. Variant cover by Kari Andrews. Another one by Clayton Crane. Another one by Mark Bagley also. Uh, Paulo Rivera. You, you're, in, you're in big company, man. I hope that he knocks it out of the park here. Um, wow. And Venom Island begins here. Enough said. Yeah, says who? Says who? I want to know more about this. But at the same time, I don't want to have spoilers for what happens at the end of uh, Absolute Carnage. So I guess I'm going to have to be okay with this. This, like, teaser variant by Clayton Crane. My God. You know every single person is getting one of these uh, variant covers, right? Because if you don't, oh, you ain't no friend of mine. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> so... Spider-Man Velocity, it really is a super speed suit. I haven't been reading it. Maybe I'll go back and read it in trade, and I'll do a spotlight and story for I keep on saying that. I need to just stop saying that. But um, this is cool. This is cool. Dennis Hopeless is doing this. And look over here. Jim Zub, Paco Diaz, doing Avengers Iron Man, because the, the game is coming out pretty soon. The Avengers game, Marvel's Avengers game is coming out. I saw the preview where you get to play Thor, Thor having to multiple times hit somebody with his hammer and they look like regular old human beings. The game doesn't look that great to me. I got to be honest. The game just doesn't look very great to me. If you're playing Thor or you're playing Captain America, there should be a huge difference in the power level. Uh, the character should be radically different, not just different skins of the same character that you're playing. Anyway, um, but look at over here. Look at over here. Gamerverse. What have I been saying? They should do Gamerverse where everybody gets in on the game. God, I'm so glad that they're going with this idea. And I know they're not copying off of me. I'm sure they had the idea a long time ago. But I am so glad they're doing that. Jody Houser doing Web of Black Widow. Black Widow. I'm talking like her. Black Widow. Um, issue 4 or 5. Uh, psh, beautiful, beautiful. Clint Barton's going to be in on this. And you see by the cover, this beautiful freaking... Um, uh, Jun Wen Yun cover. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that name. Uh, that's just gorgeous. God, I love the paints on that. I love the shadowing the, and the highlighting. Man, that is gorgeous. King Thor is finally coming to an end. It's going to be 56 pages. It's going to be the actual story. And then a whole bunch of lovely moments afterwards for the people who love Jason Aaron's run. Cool. 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 And I'm not saying, I'm not trying to say that sarcastically. Okay. Got a lot to say about this.
so Captain America, I just put out my bulk review. Um, that should already be up by now. Uh, so all of the comic books that I reviewed for the entire week, plus a couple that I didn't actually do reviews for, I do the review there in that video also. So check out the bulk reviews uh, video. Um, but one of the ones that I didn't do a solo review for, but I did review as, uh, you know, in the bulk review was Captain America issue. I forget which issue that was. Issue, it's over here someplace. But anyway, um, and I did that review, talked about it a little bit, and then I talked to my wife about the comic book. I think most of you by now know that my wife is actually black. Uh, more specifically, she's from Africa. She's not like from Canada. She's not from America. She is actually, she was born in Africa, you know, and, and all that. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm almost kind of sort of pulling the black wife card. <laughs> Anyways, like I've got friends who are black. Um, no, she, um, she's, I say this because she's on Facebook groups and, and, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, what, what did we used to use in Saudi Arabia? The, um, ah, for crying out loud, WhatsApp. Um, so the, the WhatsApp and stuff like that. Uh, she's on these groups that I'm not on, you know, saying like culturally for her. So she's on a bunch of black girl and black girl nerd and black culture and, you know, stuff like that, African culture, whatever, um, groups that I just, I have no business being on. Like, I just, I'm not on groups like that. You know, say all my groups are comic book related and figure created and stuff like that. And a lot of pol political stuff. But anyway, um, by her looking at that stuff, it's funny. I've been having a problem with um, uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates on Black, uh, excuse me, on Captain America for a while. And his Black Panther, I'm not saying that it's bad, but I think that it's moronic for him to be looking or to, to be trying to do a, a Black Panther in space story after the, you know, when the movie was out it, and, and try to sell DVD stuff. And it's such a bad idea that they're actually doing, they actually have Jim Zub writing some um, Black Panther stuff, the world of Wakanda stuff, uh, agents, excuse me, agents of Wakanda stuff, which is a great comic book, by the way. Anyway, so yeah, I've just been falling off a ton of hissy coats. Well, guess what? My wife, you know, when I go and say this to my wife, she explains to me, well, guess what? Um, on all the black girl groups that I'm on and whatnot, um, all the people there, like, you know, sh my wife doesn't read any of this stuff. We watch when he does his speeches in Congress and stuff like that, or to Congress and whatnot, which I always enjoy. But in his books, all of his books, like his actual novels, he just takes too long to get to his point. He, re like, he... He walks us through every single step along the way, and it's so arduous getting to the point that uh, the the vast majority of people genuinely just don't like his work. Go figure. So that's why I'm kind of pulling out the black wife card. Um, yeah, it turns out that it's not just in um, his comic books. So it's not just me. I'm not... You know, like, like I think I, I try to be introspective. I try to genuinely think to myself, you know, am I just judging this, you know, badly because it's not the kind of story that I would have read back in the 80s, you know? Um, so, no, that it turns out that possibly, possibly not the case. Here's a little bit more evidence to, to, to make my point. He just takes too damn long telling his stories. He doesn't know how to just tell a damn story. He milks every little thing. It's like you've got to you know, a, a three issue story that you're telling in 14 issues. It's, it's painful. It's really painful to, to read or to watch. Anyway, um, here's something I don't think anybody's going to complain about this team right here, Al Ewing and Joe Bennett, my God. And I love that he's got these, um, old school Hulk masks. Uh, anybody who grew up like I was born in the seventies and yes, I had one of these masks. I went as the incredible Hulk for Halloween one time. I had the incredible Hulk underoos. All right. So fight me. Um, they were the worst ones because underoos usually had like the entire chest piece or something, but they're not going to put a big green chest, you know, with nipples and all that stuff on it for a kid. So instead it was just a little tiny symbol with the John Buscema, um, Hulk running forward with his, his fists down, you know what I'm saying? Um, stepping forward, stepping forward with his fist down. Yeah, it was that one. But nonetheless, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, I had the underoos, damn it. So I also had the costume, which looked very much exactly like the Godzilla costume, which I used the year after. But um, yeah, man, I love that they've got these old school Hulks on here. Like, 
these, these guys are just such a great team. And, of course, the, the cover, that's Alex Ross. So Oh, and they're bringing back uh, Dale Keown to do a variant cover. So that's awesome. Anyway, over here, we've got, I've been too long on that page. So we've got uh, Savage Avengers issue number eight. This looks like it's going to be pretty cool. Um, it's not just Doctor Doom, but it's also Doctor Strange in here, mind you. Conan hates magic users. So, hey. We've got the Brood infecting Thor and going after Captain America on the cover of Avengers number 28. Uh, Jason Aaron, man, just he's not been doing it for me lately. Uh, oh, look, here's more. And uh, like the great Al Ewing isn't even doing it for me on this. I, I, I flipped through my recent issue of Valkyrie. So I like I didn't even read it. I bought a book that I didn't even read. I just flipped through it because I was so turned off by everything that I was seeing in it. Anyway, yes, yeah, so that tells you enough about how I feel about the Valkyrie series. Uh, the Last Avenger, Captain Marvel. Again, Kelly Thompson, my God, she is amazing on these stories and this evil version of Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers. Yes, I can't wait. When Pool Strikes Back, we're finally finishing. Oh, Leah Williams is doing this, and I actually like that first issue. Okay, that's cool. And who does this uh, variant cover? Or is this the main cover? Judith Steffens and Alina Strikes? Um, that is beautiful. That looks like a photograph. Damn, son. That is, that is really good. It's Chip Zardowski. Who's not, I don't know who's not buying the Avengers, but shame on you. Or the event, uh, Invaders, but shame on you if you're not. <coughs> Mark Way bringing, um, this to a close. Uh, Magnificent Miss Marvel, issue number 10. Uh, Mr. Hyde is going to be in this one. I think, yeah, Doctor Strange is trying to save Kamala's father. I told you about that already. Um, but her new suit gives her power enough to not necessarily stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, Mr. Hyde, but that's cool, man. Uh, she's going to be fighting Hyde. That's going to be a hell of, I hope that's going to be a hell of a challenge for her. Um, Tony Stark, Iron Man. Uh, the final issue, uh, ending the, the ultimatum, Ultron ultimatum, whatever the Ultron initiative, whatever that thing is. And this is going to lead directly into the new Iron Man 2020 book by Dan Slott. Right. A lot of people thinking that story is going to end. No, it's not. The book's not ending. It's, it's switching to a new title immediately. Uh, ta -Nehisi Coates doing Black Panther again. Already talked about that. Agents of Wakanda. I told you this is an amazing book. Remember, every two issues is an entire arc. So, kind of old school on that, and I love it. Future Foundation, I think this is going to be the last issue. Jeremy Whitley, um, he's a good writer. He's a good writer. Uh, I've got no, but like, for what he writes, it's a good. he's a good writer. Um, but he was apparently really pissed off. Apparently a bunch of people, um, uh, I don't know about attacking him. As a former soldier, it's hard to say they were attacking him, but, you know, internetting him. And he actually, like, started clapping back. He started yelling back at people. You know, I don't get troll mentality. I genuinely don't get that. I don't understand troll culture. And it really is a culture at this point. Um, if you don't like somebody's stuff, just don't buy their stuff. I think that should be more than enough. You gotta sit here and start attacking people and interneting people and yelling at people. Oh, you're so stupid. Your stuff sucks. I hope you die. Like, come on, man. Like, you, if you do stuff like that, you are stupid. You are an idiot. You deserve to be in a freaking asylum on an island. Like, just, my God, you're pathetic. You're so miserably pathetic. Um, like, leave the guy alone. Give him a chance to actually start writing the stuff that he wants to write. Um, Greg Pak doing Agents of Atlas. Uh, Dan Slott and Sean Isaacs doing the Fantastic Four. The Point of Origin stories continue. Strike Force, uh, Teeny Howard is on this, and mm, I didn't like this. Uh, go and check out that review. I, I didn't like the comic book. Yondu, I, Lonnie Nadler and Zach Thompson doing this. Uh, I just, I wasn't interested in the first issue. I doubt I'm going to be interested in anything else. Excuse me, Guardians of the Galaxy, Donny Cates working on this. Um, so, Thanos wins storyline, Cosmic Ghost Rider storyline, Death of the Inhuman storyline, Silver Surfer Black storyline, the current Guardians of the Galaxy storyline, it's all been leading to this. Well, apparently it's more than just that, too. Apparently there's a lot of other stuff that's leading to this. But this is awesome. And plus, Beta Ray Bill looking like the Iron Man 2020 armor a little bit. Like, that's weird. 
uh, sitting on, riding on the back of Cosmic Ghost Rider's thing and about to smash him with a super, um, um, not Thunderstrike, Stormbreaker, with a super Stormbreaker attack. Well, wow. so that looks cool, man. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to see this. The Faithless storyline ends here. So, awesome, awesome. See what's up with that. I guess that's going to be the return of Drax. Uh, Swordmaster, uh, issue number six. This is a great book. Arrow is also a great book. Like, these two are just amazing books. My peeps, if you're not reading these, do yourself the service, the honor, the distinct honor of reading these books, enjoying the art in these books. Ario and Indito doing the backup story with Shang-Chi. If you, if you don't have enough Shang-Chi in your life, this is the way to do it. Um, these are beautiful, man. Amazing stories. Old Man Quill is ending, 12 to 12. Runaways, 28. Uh, Daredevil 14, one of the best storylines ever with some of the most creative covers ever. Other writers and artists looking at this saying, man, if I would have thought to make a cover like this, I can make my own story just based off of this image. And yes, that's true. Beautiful, man. Conan the Barbarian uh, by Aaron. These are actually good stories, except for the stupid Red Queen thing that he just won't get over. Uh, Frank Thierry doing Savage Sword of Conan. Uh, Age of Conan, Valeria, Meredith Finch on it. Eh. Um, here's all the Star Wars stuff uh, we're getting into. The only one I'm really going to get into is the Star Wars Rise of Kylo Ren, issue one of four. Charles Soule is writing it. Will Sliney is doing the art. Uh, I can see the cover art here. Will Sliney is one of those guys where he's either hit or miss. There is no real in-between with Will Sliney. So I'm hoping it's going to be his hit stuff. Because Charles Soule doing a Kylo Ren story after his recent Darth Vader story. Wow. That was out of this world. So if he's going to be talking about the rise of Kylo Ren, I'm going to have to read these. Definitely have to read these. Starting with uh, Ben Solo's fall or immediately afterwards. So that's cool. Okay, here's all this, the old stuff and the new stuff. And Charles Soule is currently writing Empire Ascendant. Damn it. Actually, it's more than him. It's Pack also, Spurrier, Ethan Sachs. Ah, probably not going to read it, but we'll see. We'll see. Up oh, facsimile edition of the original Roy Thomas and Howard Shaken. Um, there's so much history in this issue, man, because they had almost nothing to go by. And Darth Vader, considering they didn't have a single image, the first images of Darth Vader was actually here in this book, Howard Shaken. The guy deserves so much credit, you know? Um, the first image is here based on what... Um, uh, George Lucas wrote describing Vader and his helmet and all that stuff. So that is like, that's amazing. Obviously, you know, it, it was a little bit longer, like it was Darth Vader, Peter Porker or something like that. But based on what, you know, the description he had to go by, that was amazing. This whole thing, this is just amazing. Great issue, facsimile edition, cover price, or yeah, standard price for the, um, for the issue. Go get that issue, man. So you got all this stuff, um, Fallen Order. Oh, Rosenberg's been writing uh, Jedi Fallen Order, Dark Temple. Might go back and get those because I love Rosenberg's writing. Um, Target Darth Vader. Probably good. I might have to go back and get that. I tried to jump on this Spurrier on um, Dr. Aphra. I just, it was good. I just, it wasn't good enough for me to keep reading. Had to cut back on some comics. Um, the IDW books, the Young Guns, uh, but this is the IDW Marvel stuff, Marvel Action. Here we go with some statues and all that stuff. <clears throat> Here's just all the hardcovers and whatnot that's coming out. Um, boom, 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 boom. Herb Trimpe. Yep, yep, yep. Submariner, Marvel Fanfare, the Black Widow on Omnibus, <laughs> John Burns. Sensational She-Hulk, Mon uh, Marvel Monograph, Art of Declan Shalvey. That's cool. Mm, let's see all this other good stuff. Oh, Electra. Oh, Love and War. Okay, cool. By Millar and uh, Sinkevitz. Sweet, man. Sweet. The Absolute Carnage stuff on trade. The, uh, wait, let's see. Hold on. Let's see who, who got their comments. And, yep, all the, all the already big guys. Guys, we're always going to say something nice. I said nice stuff, too. A lot of us said nice things. But we don't have a huge umbrella corporation backing us. So most of the love that these guys get is from us. 
us smaller YouTube guys, or YouTube guys, period. YouTube's always, past, it's, it's the corporation world, man. This is the way that they think. Guys like Comics Explained, guys like, uh, uh, the Little House, I can't remember their names right now, because they don't watch them, but I know a lot of you guys do. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, they don't get that stuff. Wow, this is already going to be on trade in January 2020, which means it's going to be out very soon. So, Contagion, uh, Bulk Comics Review. Check out my issue three in the Bulk Comics Review. Review, That's good. <laughs> stop breaking a shield, for the love of God. Just stop. Um, all these things look cool. Crazy trade paperback. Uh, the, uh, the original trilogy movie adaptations. Sweet. Let's see. Let me lick my finger and see if I can get these things to go by a little bit faster. The Milestones. This is called cool, the Onslaught story. Cool. The original Ecstatics. Awesome. New Mutants. Ah, oh, there we go. I love the, the. They should be cheaper. That's the thing that bothers me. Since there's no color in these usually, they should be a lot cheaper than 40 freaking dollars. When I can find these at dollar stores and at um, auction houses and whatnot for only like up to maximum $5, yeah, those things should come down in price a lot. Come on. Especially this. I mean, come on, dude. You want people to read these things. Just put them out. Make them cheaper. Coming in the Gambler story. Uh, issue 6 through 11. Okay, cool. Good to know. Um, that's literally the only reason why I wanted to see that. How many issues are there? I can't believe this ended. can't believe this ended. Go check out my bulk review for the final issue review of Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur. All these... All of these. Okay, guys. So, once again, let me talk about my sponsor, um, Beautiful Halo. Get all your 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 stuff for all your, your new clothing, accessories, and whatnot for um, winter. Because, bang. All right. And, uh, oh, and if you uh, send me a copy of your receipt, blank out what you don't want me to see. But just make sure that I can see the date that you actually got it this month. Make sure I can see the date that you actually purchased something, anything from Beautiful Halo, and I will give you access to my Batman vs. Superman movie review, uh, which is going to be a, uh, an exclusive. It's going to be an exclusive for uh, um, patrons. So anybody who, who supports me. So you will be considered a patron by buying from my sponsor. Okay, so previews, book here, uh, this... <laughs> This is great. First off, I missed a page. Entire cover page thing. This whole thing. I feel like all they're doing is selling the stuff by sex at this point, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but Charles Soule writing his novels. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. All my Star Wars stuff is falling. What's up with that? What's up with that? Ah, oh, the Millennium Falcon is down. Falcon down. Falcon down. Uh, can you guys tell I'm getting tired? Sorry. Let me try and... Uh, Wake up a little bit. Okay, so rare prototype coming to auction on Hawks. That is sick. Look, it's actually got the missile. Anybody who knows anything about the original Star Wars figures, look at this. This is the actual jute so that the missile could actually pop up. The original one that you can mail away for actually had a missile that fired. You Like that was actually, you know, the, the little thing and you could fire the missile. And then they thought, wait a second, this is dangerous for kids. So instead, they just had the missile that was actually on there. Yeah, on and off, instead of actually shooting the thing out. Um, so that's, like, this is actually really cool that the missile separates from this little thing. That is freaking awesome. And I hope they come with a backup missile because you always lost this thing. But the few, like, I never owned one of these, but I knew somebody who did own one. And I was so jealous of the kid. So make your friends jealous. Anyway, like, that's a piece of history, my peeps. All these comic books coming out. Let me try and uh, move through these a little bit faster. Um, let's see. The Comic Fest. Yes, yes, yes. Edge Essentials. The Joe, see, this is what I'm talking about. Indie Edge. Joe Hill. Like, this guy is just getting so much, so much crazy stuff in here. This is Joe Hill, isn't it? I think this is Joe Hill. Yeah. Yep, because he's doing the lock and key. So... Freaking Joe Hill just killing stuff. Is that the music group Triumph? Tell me that's not the, the Canadian music group Triumph. Um, anyway, I kind of watch these guys' podcast one of these freaking days, man. Like, what the heck? Anyway, um, so, oh, 
there you go. If you guys want the uh, free copy of this issue, there it is right there. Go ahead and pause the video. Give me a comment that you're the one who won the, um, the free issue, uh, this issue for free, the, um, the digital version, and then bang, you're golden. Yeah, send me, send me a little comment and I'll, I'll send a shout out. Advertising incoming. This looks amazing. Uh, Power Rangers and uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossing over. Look at these variant covers. These are beautiful. Unbelievably epically beautiful. All holding the Red Ranger helmet. Um, it turns out that the Green Ranger, Tommy, is going to join with Shredder for some reason. And the... Of course, the Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles are going to have to fight each other. Uh, and then they wind up, you know, teaming up when they realize what's really going on. And they have to try and figure out what's going on with Tommy. So that's cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. That looks like fun. I might have to read those. Man in the High Castle is coming to uh, an end. So they're doing all the artwork for that. Let's try and move through this a little bit faster. Because, yeah. Spinner racks. You can get your spinner racks here. I'm going to have to get a freaking spinner rack one of these days. These giant size ones. How much are these damn things? Ah, I'll have to see in the order form. I'm serious when I say this, though. I'm going to have to get a freaking spinner rack. Because, my God, man. Like, how cool would that be? Having a spinner rack right behind me? Dude, that'd just be sick. Okay, so, once again, really quick, there's all the stuff that's actually coming out this month. Um, boom, all this good stuff. Bang, boom, shakalaka, baby. Got all these books coming out for uh, uh, for free for Halloween Comic Fest. And then, of course, you can buy for, what was this, only like five bucks and you get 25 mini comics. They're all the same one. You give these out on Halloween. You give these out instead of candy on Halloween. Like that is just, or, or put a lollipop with it, whatever. Who cares? But just giving out those, you know, you can give the Usagi Yojimbo. I think that's probably the perfect one, but there's going to be a whole bunch that you can give also. Uh, these are all the gems of the month, so check all these out. Got a lot to say about this Vampirilla coming out, five covers. We got a lot to say about it. Um, again, this looks amazing. Sweet. Okay, image. You guys remember? Don't forget. Um, I'll I'll uh, uh, I'll I'll promote your. I'll pin. There we go. I'll pin your comment on top if you can actually separate all of the different. Um, companies the comic book companies that i'm doing not just in this book but like you know at this time marvel book at this time dc book at this time the image stuff at this time the boom stuff yeah so here we go let's start talking about all these crazy books here we've got the previews for all these the old guard force multiplied greg rucka leandro fernandez got the preview issues here redemption this looks pretty good like, I love the art on this. This looks sexy good. So, Redemption. Might have to check this out. Look at that art. Ah, that looks good. All right, Project Xmas 1, Mark Millar, of course. Um, all this image comic stuff. Hardcore Reloaded. <laughs> so, this is that guy who, um, I, I did the review for issues number one and two, I think. And then I just fell off the book. I, I, I was just reading too many books. But anyway, they're going to be doing a Reloaded for Hardcore. Now he's going to be in space, it looks like. Okay, cool. Yeah, I love you too, Bagel, but I need you to go away. I'm busy. Hey, okay, come on, go away. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, go ahead. Yep, love you, Bagel. Bye-bye. Okay, um, Hack and Slash, or Hack Slash, 15th anniversary. It's going to be a one-shot. Bunch of stuff there. Over my dead body. James Fair and... Let's see, Sea of Stars, gonna, Volume 1 is going to be in the um, Bang Up, uh, Sonata, uh, Unearth, Birthright, Bitter Root, cool, cool, um, let's see, Black Science Premiere, Ice Cream Man, Isola, uh, Kill Six Billion Demons, Outer Darkness, Postal, Rat Queens, Volume 1 and 2, Trade Paperbacks, Rumble, Skyward, Sleepless, Spawn, Origins. Hello. Oh, new printing. Stray Bullets, uh, The Wicked and the Divine, Book 4, Hardcover. These guys. Yeah. Battle Pug, Issue 4, Ascender, Chopra, Criminals 11, Dead Eyes. 
uh, Deadly Class, Death or Glory, Die, number 10, Heart Attack, Getting Falls, Family Trees, Farmhand, Philadelphia, Hit Girl, Season 2, number 11, Manifest Destiny, Marked, Middle West, Moonshine, Nomen Omen, and Oblivion Song, Olympia, Outcast, Postal Deliverance, Hell, and uh, Pretty Deadly, The Rat, uh, Pretty Violent, Rat Queens, Reaver, and uh, SFSX. You can go and check out my review of issue one on Pornhub. Uh, I can't link it anymore. I actually got a, um, uh, I actually got flagged for posting a link to Pornhub on my thing. So just go and check out the um, SFSX, Prof uh, Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Do searches like that. You'll find all my stuff. Please subscribe. Please subscribe to my Pornhub stuff. Because, um, you know, while you're there, you know, just saying. <laughs> um, Spawn 304, Trees, Undiscovered Country, The Weatherman. You know this guy's going to 500. Hey, Todd McFarlane ain't playing around. Merch. Bunch of dye merch. That's cool. So a pin. They should have an iron-on patch, man. Does anybody do iron-on patches anymore? Uh, I actually sewed my patches in. They got the t-shirt. They got uh, the Walking Dead. The, the, that's awesome. They got the badge. Sheriff Grimes. Walking Dead. I don't know what this is. This is dupe. <laughs> um... Sweet, sweet, a whole bunch of stuff here, a whole bunch of stuff, Skull Digger, Harrow County, Criminal Macabre, oh, the Dark Horse stuff, just started, just started, sorry, um, this looks kind of cool, Alien vs. Predator, Thicker Than Blood, uh, four issue limited series, art oh, looks great, like she tases, cattle prods, <laughs> the Punisher, uh, Kill Whitley Donovan, The Butcher of Paris, Grendel, Berserker Unbound, Ether, Mask, Dreadful Ed and Mary Scary, Stranger Things, Zombie Boys. Okay, I'll probably check it out. Nexus, Newspaper Strips, uh, Triage, Strayed, Steeple, Vox Machina Origins, The Or- uh, Season 2. Uh, season 1.5 of the Orville, New Beginnings, Elf Quest, Spell on Wheels, as opposed to Hell on Wheels, Crone, Fight Club, American Gods, Hellboy, BPRD, Witchfinder, Psychoanalysis, Manor Black, uh, Joe Golem, Cal Crowley, Everything, Ruby Falls, Invisible Kingdom, G Willow. Uh, stuff here, Frozen, Space, Legend of Korra, Little Mermaid, Onward, Cinderella, Dumbo, Plants vs. Zombies, Ant for Art of Mana, Wes, Wes Evans, Anderson's, jeez, Wes Anderson's, Isle of the Dogs, okay, don't care, Berserk, that looks sick, um, heard they're, they're actually making a new uh, anime for that. Uh, Dying is Easy, this is actually on the back cover also. Dying is Easy stuff. You got these. You already saw it. This looks great. Dying is Easy. They got the uh, Gem of the Month preview. It's uh, six issues. That's what you got. Wellingston. Wellington. Um, all this stuff, y'all. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I Can Sell You a Body. Ah, cool. I Can Sell You a Bridge. DuckTales. Uncle Scrooge. My Little Ponies. Okay, these things. They just look too cute. I can just pinch them and squeeze them and snap into place. They look like bubble gum. They look like bubble gum. I want to chew them up. Little, little bubbles. Care Bear bubble stare. Uh, this looks like an Ewok. Not cool. If that's an Ewok, I want to straight beat it up. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog. We got uh, G.I. Joe with the Kronos stuff. Go. Cool. Let's look at it. It's uh, Transformers. That's a pretty interesting looking cover i kind of like that the galaxies still doing the structure kind of rising with the help of their benefactors the construction guns have once again been empowered and with power comes a way for them to escape their exile and tear everything down in the process the devastating conclusion to the first arc maybe all sorts of cool stuff here Chekhov's phaser as opposed to Chekhov's gun they're calling it Chekhov's phaser that is ingenious Jim McCann, good freaking job. Good thinking. Pauline Dynamite, Star Pig, Kill the, the Kill Lock, Narcos, 
Cobra Kai. I'm, I might have to pick this up. Glow vs. the baby face. Crow, hack, slash. Glow. Glow vs. baby face. Crow, hack and slash. Hack, slash. Ooh, Saki Yojimbo. Rising Sun. Read all the memories. Clue Candlestick. All these cool things, man. All these cool things in this unbelievably huge book. Jack Kirby's New Gods. Jack Kirby's Mr. Miracle. Jack Kirby's Commandy. More picks. Statues. Okay. So Vampirella. They've got a lot of covers on here. A lot of uh, variant covers. Stanley Archer and Lau. Guilhem March. Look at all these guys. I'm not going to go into all these guys. But they got another one by uh, Frank Facetta. The Icon Edition. Uh, they've always got a cosplay cover. Where they never seem to mention who the cosplay actress is. But this is interesting. So... Um, this is already number six, and they're putting so much money into these covers. I'm imagining that this book isn't selling. Christopher Priest isn't doing a good job with the story, I would imagine. Uh, the book apparently can't be selling because they're doing all these variant covers, which, let's be realistic, if the story was amazing for everybody, not just, you know, a select few, well, then they wouldn't need to do all these variant covers, right? Because that's just a ploy to try and get you to buy books that you otherwise wouldn't buy so vampirilla number six this is not just a regular art germ cover this is in acetate acetate anyway this is how it'll regularly look and then it can also look like this so it can the same cover apparently can the blood splattered so bang that's interesting they're really trying hard to sell this book through variant covers, specifically Art Germ, because they know that they will sell. Uh, there's a thorn. Um, if they haven't done an Art Germ cover yet, I'm surprised they haven't done an Art Germ cover yet. They got to start hooking people with this stuff, man. James Bond. Look at this. They got the uh, issue number two of Vampirilla um, statue, Art Germ uh, statue. They got. U.S. Mint, half dollars. Obviously with an art germ on there. Like, and these are the lazy ones. It's not like you actually did a mold. You just didn't open with a, with a picture in it that you already bought from somebody. And you got it in this coin form. It's the laziest thing in the world. Sheena, they got to start doing more with her. J. Scott Campbell's art from um, Gone 3D. Uh, Black Terror. Betty Page Unbound. Chastity. The Death Defying Devil. Kiss Zombies. Uh, I don't know. Mark Russell's um, Red Sonia is still going. It finishes with issue 12. All this Betty and Veronica stuff. I missed something. There we go. Now you can see it all. The Boys. The Boys. More Vampirilla stuff. Case and everything. Turk. Yeah, that's beautiful. The Red Mother. Boom Studios now. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. These amazing covers. This looks great. Um, Blake, the Big Black. Stand at Attica. So I know in general what Attica is. Um, but I can't remember the finite details. I'll probably have to go on Wikipedia it up really quick. But I'm glad they're doing historical stuff. Even if they're going to fictionalize, the, fictionalize it a little bit, I guess that would be okay. But, yeah, I really want to see this. I really want to read this. And I'm glad that they're doing stuff like that. Uh, Klaus and the Life and Times of Joe Christmas. <laughs> Klaus. <coughs> I did a spotlight on story and a uh, 10 things about, you know, uh, and explained in a minute. I'm making air quotes now for uh, Klaus. I could check those out. Um gotta wrap this up because i am actually getting really tired and i'm sure that you guys aren't enjoying hearing me fall asleep while i'm doing these uh just been up all night okay just a bunch of stuff Is that really all that we're gonna get out of five years stuff now here we go action lab the danger zone and malagma 
That's it. Zombie Tramp stuff. Go and check out my Pornhub reviews for that. I did Amalgama number one on Pornhub. Here's Aftershock. Um, first volume in hardcover. Wow. December 4th. 50 bucks for 316 pages. Um, Dark Arc 316. Dark Arc. And then we're going to start with the After the Flood. Issue number three is going to be out by then. Dark Red. Animosity. Midnight Vista. Bad Reception. Bad Reception by Juan Doe, who actually did the art for uh, Dark Arc. And now he's doing everything in here. The lettering, the writing, the art, and the cover. Gotta read this, right? The re uh, bad Reception. Shoplifters will be liquidated. You are obsolete. Monster Hunter. A bunch of the uh, so-called essentials. This is uh, American Mythology, right? Yep. Scary Christmas. Remember, you guys feel free to pause on any old page that you want. Hey, Lady Death. I did a Lady Death review on Pornhub. <sighs> this is funny. So they're going to have the squad with uh, five different covers. One of each of the squad members. One of all four of the squad members. Uh, it's still going to be called Alexander Ocasio-Cortez and the Freshman Force. Um, the You know, colon, the squad. It's going to be a one-shot. That's cool. That's cool. The immortal wraparound covers. The Phantom. We really need the Phantom. But like a really good the Phantom story. Basically Tarzan with guns. I mean, come on. How can you go wrong technically, right? Final issue. Oh my god. At the end of your tether. That sounds cool. To eat and to drink. might actually be just a little bit too big i mean let's just be realistic rye he's gonna have that little kid with him go and check out my bloodshot preview or excuse me review where uh i think i actually show you some of this stuff in there but i definitely talk about it um bloodshot is an amazing book it genuinely is an amazing book new and old again go and check out my review okay jane silent bob figures from the uh, jane silent bob reboot that's coming out pretty soon plus a fully articulated plant uh, these are seven inch tall figures, which piss me off. They should be six inch tall. That should just be the standard, the one, one sixth model. Um, I don't know what this stuff is. Vault. Okay. Uh, Zinoscope. A whole bunch of stuff here. Really try to get into it, uh, into these for these guys, but I just can't. I'm trying so hard. I'm trying so hard. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Manga stuff. No longer human. Why are you no longer human to me? Yawamushi pedal. Drifting dragons. It's like a yaoi. One piece books. It's so ugly. <laughs> um, that looks cool though. I gotta admit, there's that kiss lip thing. Oh, what is this, Rob Zombie? Oh, it's the Joker. The in the shadow of the bat. That's kind of cool. Up. Oh, okay. Now let's just check out the figures. 
and we're done here. So, let's move on. Come on, man. If they had bats flying around them too, that would just be amazing. But God, that's beautiful. It's going to be the black and white. It's a pops thing. I love that they're doing the um, Iron Giant. Ninja Turtles still. Okay. So this is apparently an 8-inch figure, which bothers me. They should all be 6-inch scale. Wearable, wearable. I don't know if this is wearable, but these two are definitely 1-in-1-inch um, one one scale. Um, so it fits, you know, it's wearable. You can put it on your head. These are 8 inches tall, and um, it's seamless. So highly articulated, they're saying. I don't know ugh, exactly how articulated, but there's a lot of articulation in this thing, so it'll move around a whole lot. But, um, and this is obviously from the um, Empire Strikes Back, so it's a beautiful figure. But again, I only do the six inch figures and the and the two and a half inch uh, Imagine X style uh, figures. But anyway, um, bang, you got this badass. And um, it'll look like, like all the skin and clothes will be on it so that you don't see when it bends. You know when like it bends an elbow and you'll see the joints and whatnot? You will not see joints on these. Like the clothes and the skin is malleable enough that you won't see those problems. Got all these guys. That is sick. Rodan over here. Man, that's beautiful stuff. Truly really beautiful stuff. John Wick. Uh, this is the chapter two stuff. So he's got the different stuff. He's got the coin. It's actually coming with a coin. Like, come on, man. That's just great. Um, this is nice. 150 bucks. I don't know about that, but this is really beautiful. Um, I forget her name, but the actress uh, who plays Ray. God, she is beautiful. Um, good stuff there. Miles Morales just looks amazing. This is nothing but hysterical. Uh, animated Black Panther playing with a ball of string. Very inventive. Love that. Look at this in the in the in that light in that shadow. God, that's beautiful. They're re-releasing this, which is cool. Uh, this guy here, uh, free comic book day exclusive. So the character is not free. It's gonna be fifty bucks, but you buy this on free comic book day. So y'all gotta wait to get your Emma Frost on. Got all these things. These are freaking hysterical. Uh, there's a whole bunch of statues. There's this and an Aquaman one. Statues really cheap on um, uh, Amazon right now, which is surprising. But yeah, all this. Bootyful. It's bootyful. There's always a Harley Quinn figure. You get a better look now. The Batman black and white. All of these. Uh, this is great because these are individuals. So you see how this actually works. It's, you just buy that statue, and then you could buy Penguin on the side of a roof, Catwoman on the side of a roof, and then Harley, like that. And then you can combine them all. They did one for the Bat family uh, on a roof, and now they've got one for the uh, villains on a roof. And I really wish that they'd do more than just these four characters, but whatever. It's pretty cool for now. <coughs> uh, I love anything with the Huntress. This is a beautiful statue these are called hiawatha come on man um and this guy here an eight inch special deep space nine i've got a bigger one but still uh, all of these now, these are nice the the one in uh one twelfth figures these are all cool i'm sure this one will sell massively this one however wow 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 um what I need is a Bruce Wayne. Like, I don't need a Batman. I need a Bruce Wayne. Fully articulated, multiple heads, expressions. Love that they're doing all these aliens. If they were making cheaper, I would definitely buy all of them. But I, like, if you did like a, like a, a five pack or something like that, um, I would get a whole bunch of these. Forget about it. Um, these are all great. This is great right here. The Harry Potter with the car. Just need a tree. Um, this is these are awesome. This doesn't say the size, but this one says that it's eight that this is eight inches tall, so I imagine it's the exact same thing. So eight inches tall, sorry, two inches too tall. I don't, I don't need my Cenobites looking eye to eye with um um build a figure hulk or something like that. So this is really cool. You got um the one one twelfth guy coming out, Black Panther here. 
they're re-releasing a lot of these um or you just you know putting out more of them that's awesome because uh people had a hard time getting these three figures specifically ronin uh ebony maw and hercules i got hercules immediately that was just pure luck now i just try to order them in advance Got all of these guys, plus the Iron Man that they're not showing, the War Machine that they're not showing. Um, these are cool. I'm probably going to have to, I might have to get the Ant-Man for my sons, but I definitely have to get a Hulk for them. And I need a Thanos for them. They've been asking for a Thanos figure. They need a bad guy for these guys to fight, right? I just found a Doctor Strange one. Uh, anyway, these are cool. I really don't want to get these, but I really want these two, especially Heimdall. I really want these two because I don't have them, but I'm probably going to wind up getting them all. I don't even care about building the bro Thor. I just don't care, but it's probably something that later I'm going to kick myself if I don't get. So go figure, but I will be piecemealing these because if I miss something, oh well. And if somebody wants to sell me the pieces for these, because I just don't care about them, uh, is what it is, baby, is what it is. And then over here, look at this. These were actually really good. Um, unfortunately, it's just, it came at a time when people, like, you did an entire set based on these characters that, for the most part, nobody cared about. And the Build-A-Figure, I don't think anybody was asking for a century. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad that they did it, because I only bought one of the Grey gar Gargoyles, but, uh, and I never bought any of the binary figures. I just don't feel the need for one. I've got enough Captain Marvels. I bought two of these, two of these, two of these, and two of these. Um, and two of the other Kree, the pink-skinned Kree that they're not showing. Um, what do you call it? Because I wanted, I really generally wanted two of each of the Kree. So I've got four Kree right now. Two, um, the blue skin, two of the, which actually looks more black skin. And then two of the, um, what do you call it? The, uh, the white-skinned ones, the pink-skinned ones. Um, and I got two scrolls. I probably want more, but they need to sell a scroll uh, multi-pack. They need to sell the two-pack scrolls. I didn't really want two of these, but they sold the, the they brought the price down a lot because they overstocked these things in a major way. They really expected these figures to sell, and they did. Like they actually did, but they seriously oversold on these because all the other ones were always so successful. They expected this one. I'm afraid that just wasn't going to happen with a themed deck all these other ones were not themed really you know what i'm saying um the only thing that themed them was the build a figure piece with it but like when did these two go together you know so like when did these go together like come on so um building a themed one that was bound to just not sell well um i wanted two of the nick furies because i want one for the actual nick fury another one i'm just going to pop off his head and if i find another black figure that i can use i'll pop his head on top and then oh look i've got two black plain suit figures so yay i didn't have to so that means that i've got two of every single build a figure piece except for the gray gargoyle right i have zero use for a great for a second gray gargoyle but i did find somebody who only wanted gray gargoyle and he sold me the top piece so i now have two century build a figures so I'm about as happy as happy can get. And I honestly wouldn't mind getting more Cree. I honestly wouldn't mind getting like one of each Cree extra just because, you know what I'm saying? The idea of actually having them. Um, more of the Marvel Legends. I, I don't care about the cute face, but that is a gorgeous piece, man. That is beautiful. I have these two. I don't have the uh, Captain America Walmart exclusive. So I've been holding off on doing my Tory review for that. But I did Tory reviews for all of these on my uh, CBU hyphen toys channel so go and check that out uh please um these are coming in december probably going to come a little bit earlier too but definitely coming in december it's about damn time this is it's going to be about this tall about the, the size of the book maybe a little bit shorter than the book i don't know but it's going to be like a build a figure except bigger than a build a figure because they already did the build a figure so uh whatever it is it's a second chance to get the giant man and i didn't get the original giant man so boom that's awesome um, I need this in my life. I want a Deadpool in the, uh, suit and I want, um, a hit monkey. This is just a, a reskin of the, uh, speed demons little, um, uh, what is it? Silvermane in the little remote control car. So now they've got head pool in a little remote control car too. Whatever. Um, this, I could give two squirts about, I don't care. This I bought along with the, uh, EB games for me in Canada. It's an EB games exclusive, um, Wolverine Logan with the uh, cowboy hat and the cowboy hat is on his head backwards too. I did not put the Tory reviews up for these yet, but I will. Um, I don't 
<clears throat> I liked the original X-Force better than this version of X-Force, but I still have some fond memories of this X-Force. So I wouldn't mind getting these. Plus, I really liked Polaris when she was super strong. Uh, and these are both just gorgeous, gorgeous figures. I already have the Build-A-Figure um, Juggernaut Wave of um, Havoc. I really don't feel the need to get this one also, but like I said, it is a beautiful figure. So I'm probably going to wind up getting this anyway, just because this, however, this is a need. Need this. So yeah, like we're playing um, World of Warcraft and all of a sudden this pops up, I'm rolling need every single time. So um, yeah, all these guys, we got <laughs> Bruce Lee and, and Elvis, like this is just awesome. Uh, very, very awesome. So, bang, Jimi Hendrix. I didn't realize it's Jimi Hendrix, and they're gonna redo all the kiss stuff. Cool, man. Kill cool. Wizard of Oz stuff they just showed. The Mario, these are cute. I know that my uh, my oldest son is gonna want the Gold Ranger, especially. He's really gonna want that Gold Ranger. I want the Kimberly. I really only care about the Mighty Morphins. This pisses me off. This to me is just stupid. I want the Gold Ranger, but I want multiple putties, not just one. But I don't need multiple Gold Rangers or, or um, Green Rangers. No, instead, you know what's going to happen is that people are going to buy multiple of these so they can get at least two putties and they're going to sell one Green Ranger. But who doesn't want at least one putty? In fact, I think everybody wants two putties. So this was a bad idea for me. I think this was a really boneheaded maneuver on these guys' parts. You could sell the Green Ranger by itself. You don't need to put the Green Ranger with anybody else. Plus, I already got the White Ranger one. Come on, man. Like, you don't need to freaking double up on this. All right? The putties you need to double up on. You need to, do a, you need to have a two-pack of putties. Because, in my opinion, I think that everybody's going to want putties at least two and i would probably buy two or three of these packs because i like to do my stop motion stuff i like to actually play with my toys i would love to actually have six putties to go after the the power rangers that would be great but minimum of two so yeah that's painfully annoying um tnmt guys this is cool they're re-releasing all of these guys i have all of them except for uh the slash uh, i think that's slash who is that are you going to say who that is? Anyway, I don't care. Um, whoever that is, I don't have him. I don't have this person. I have the Siege version of this. I This looks like the Warbitron version, but it's not. It actually says Shockwave, so that's interesting. Um, MP. Oh, this is an MP figure, I think. The Lancer. Um, repaints and of, of original um, Siege characters. I hate when they do that, but whatever. <clears throat> I have all of these. I found one pack of Reflector in Toys R Us, and it was too expensive for me at the time. I didn't have the cash on me at the time, so I didn't get, and I'm kicking myself now, but I really do want the Reflector. This is beautiful, man. Um, I don't know who this guy is. I don't think I care about him, but I already have the Siege Optimus Prime. If you have the Ultra Magnus, then you already have this figure, so I don't care about this. I, I, I do not have two squirts that I could spare for that character, but Astro Train, cannot wait. These I already have. I actually have an extra one of these. If uh, enough people go to my toy review uh, channel, if I, if I get myself a thousand subscribers, just a thousand, I'll start doing giveaways. And uh, I have an extra one of the uh, Rumble and Laserbeak. I will do that as a giveaway. So, yeah. Funkos, go ahead and pause that page if you want. Albert Einstein, that's kind of cool. All these guys. Harry Potter set. This is awesome. That is really awesome. All these guys. Injustice. Kill. Where's your cape, man? Oh, I see. She's got her cape held. Good idea. I love that they've actually got a Full Moon Saiyan form. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. Gundams. Um, I don't need a 12-inch tall Hagrid. That's a little crazy right there. You might want a Snape. That's up to you. But 12-inch Hagrid? Dude. Like, dude. My Hero Academia. One Piece. Here's the Transformer stuff. Here we go. Masterpiece. 
Leo Convoy. So it's Optimus Prime as a lion. Okay. Uh, model kit of Skywarp. This is interesting. Wheel Jack. I'm just waiting for him on Siege. I just collect the Siege figures. Here's all these guys. Bunch of blanks. I need to get uh, six inch figure blanks. Like Marvel Legends style blanks. I need to get some of those. This is cool as hell, man. Digimon thing. That's cool. <laughs> Ultraman. Okay. Uh, that just looks like a wedgie. That doesn't even look sexy to me. That's just weird. Okay. Tom and Jerry. Um, Bear Bricks. I need a Deadpool one. I need one of Deadpool of those. Mazinger Z. Always good to see. That chatterbox thing of um, Mouth of Sauron. Looks like a Cenobite. <laughs> Okay, Ambison. That's cool. They should make a uh, a Funko Pop of the lamp. They probably already have. I know, I know they've done a TARDIS, which is just on the previous page, too. The Harry Potter stuff, the little tumblers. Captain America clock, which I've seen. I've never seen a web clock, though. That's cool. That was all very cool. That's very cool also. Um, if I, yeah, I might get the uh, Emperor uh, with the throne. But if I don't, I'll just get that with a regular Emperor. What is this? Oh, the Series 2 booster packs for the Siege game. I need somebody to play with. Here's all the Warhammer stuff and the D&D &D style stuff. That is cool. Fun Co pop strategy game. Pathfinder, baby. Dice. I like the old Transformers guys. Right? Sports cards. And that's it. All right, guys. Once again, make sure you check out Beautiful Halo. Anybody who gets a uh, even just one item on there, if you get just one item, I will send you the um, uh, the the Batman vs Superman movie review that I did. So you get my opinion, my valued opinion on the Batman vs Superman movie. And, uh, yeah, yeah, you also get a cool shirt or a hat or a sweater or a hoodie pullover, something along those lines. So, Beautiful Halo, check them out. They are my one and only sponsor. Love them. They love you. You love them. If you love me. And uh, that's going to be it for the previews for this month. And that's it. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.